Hello, my name is Chloe. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my July wrap up. So this seems like a pretty chilled setup. This is because I have plan planly poured, poorly planned my time and I'm filming this very late on a Sunday before I start my working week which has a lot of studying involved as well as work. So apologies if this looks a little bit more thrown together. I'm trying my best with what I have and the time I have. So overall July was a pretty much fine reading month just to quote myself. I did read 20 books which I know sounds really really good but I had no five star reads. My average rating came out at a 3.45 so that is okay for me seeing as a three is still a decent book and overall I read 6,381 pages. That was split across 12 physical books, seven audiobooks and one poetry collection. I had one one star book, one two star books, two two and a half star books, seven three star books, six three and a half star books, one four star book and two four and a half star books. That, that's it. We've got there. We've got there. So I have them in order. We're going to start from worst book of the month, building up to the best the worst book of the month, the book I rated one star, is The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. I really, really did not enjoy this one. I still would not be able to tell you what happened. I listened to this on audio and like glanced down at the physical book every so often. Um, but I was reading this off the back of reading All the Missing Girls, which I read quite a while ago, and The Girl from Widow Hills, which I'll get onto a little bit later. And I decided with Megan Miranda that I often like the story of her books, I just don't really like the writing style. And in this one, the writing style was awful for me. I hated the structure. This was jumping between two or three periods in time and I could never really work out where we were or who we were interacting with. I was very, very confused. Uh, but this is about Avery, who a year ago, Avery's best friend Sadie was found dead, dashed on the rocks the night of the infamous end of summer party. To Avery's disbelief, the police quickly rule Sadie's death as suicide. A year later, new evidence surfaces that suggest Sadie was murdered. Evidence that places Avery under suspicion. Grief-stricken and ostracized, ostrac ostrac ostracized, Avery must clear her name before she's branded a killer and so I hated the structure and I also hated how this works out. Obviously I can't tell you what I didn't like about it but it did my least favourite thing in thrillers in terms of what has happened. Um, like the big reveal was my least favourite big reveal that they can possibly do. So one star and it's gone from my life. Well it will be going from my life. Next, my two-star read was Cruel Summer by Juno Dawson. So I'm very sorry, Emily. I read this on Emily's recommendation from Emily Kathleen Reads. She picked it for my TBR this month and I really didn't like it. It's a YA murder mystery kind of thriller book about a group of friends who go on holiday to Spain and a year before a girl from their friendship group um, had died and kind of similarly to this one actually, it was branded a suicide but they do not believe it was a suicide and I hated this book so much. It wasn't completely awful, there were some redeeming factors but yeah it just wasn't a great time. I thought the um, big reveal was very very obvious, I thought everything was over the top and there weren't really consequences for people's actions as I thought there should be. Um, but yeah, I'm not holding this one up because I've already unhauled it. I actually had a very damaged old library copy and then if you guys follow my vlogs, I had a massive situation where my dishwasher decided it didn't want to work while I was away for the weekend and Cruel Summer is one of the books that was lost to the river that started in my apartment so luckily that was only unhaul books that happened to but Cruel Summer unfortunately is unreadable in the recycling bin. <laughs> Next a two and a half star book I have How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. So this was my buddy read with Emily from Novel Novels for the month and sadly it wasn't my cup of tea. So I do also have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig which I would like to give a go but this one I don't have it in front of me it's in an unhaul bag somewhere but this is about our main character who doesn't age at the same rate as normal people so he's pretty much like 
immortal but he can be killed and he will die eventually it's just a very very long time away and it goes through this man's life between when he was actually a teenager and then when he was an older adult still looked like a teenager and now he's however many hundred years old but he looks about 40 and he's a history teacher and i just really didn't like the structure of this either it was quite a lot of flashbacks where i thought it was mainly going to be him in real time but rather than just a quick flashback we had chapters of him being in different places in different eras which was cool it was a good idea but it just wasn't what i expected from the story so it dampened my rating a little bit i also feel like the big reveal in this of what is actually happening with some high, some different characters was really really obvious very predictable and yeah sadly i just didn't really enjoy it but again two and a half stars meant it had to have some redeeming features but sadly i can't describe them in detail then the other two and a half star book was the girl from widow hills by mega miranda so i read that one before i read the last house guest but um yeah the girl from widow hills <laughs> this one i did prefer mega miranda's writing in it i enjoyed the setup i enjoyed um all the interactions between the characters i thought the actual structure of the story was done very very well and i followed what was going on so a completely different review to this book but it was very obvious to guess the twist i guessed it from the first like chapter when we knew the situation so this is about a girl who is found uh, she goes missing and she's found in the drains following a massive storm and nobody really knows how she has survived um but she is found in these drains and then her mom makes quite a lot of money off selling her story etc and the girl from widow hills just wants to move away and she moves away and she changes her name and tries to live a normal life and yeah i thought it was very very predictable so i have decided at this point after reading three of Mega Miranda's books, I will not be picking up another. Next, the three star books. The first one I have is Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. And I have no shame. I gave this three stars. I actually thought it was quite fun to read. So this is about a group of women and our main female character who are abducted by aliens. And then they end up crashing onto a ice kind of looking planet. What's well, called Ice Planet Barbarians? Duh. Um, and she goes off to try and find help, um, ideally in the form of humans, but that doesn't happen. And she is greeted by our male main character, an alien, with oral sex. That's as far as I'll explain. It was a really good time, actually. It was only about 180 pages long, and I will be reading the sequel. Next, we have The Patient by Jasper Dewitt, which was another audiobook. And this one, it was pretty good. Okay, so this is where three stars is a bit of a nuance for me, where I did enjoy the idea for this story and I, I enjoyed how it was told. So this is about a guy who works in a mental health hospital and there is a specific patient in this hospital who no, he doesn't get treatment and everyone just knows that he is a handful to manage and to provide care for. So he's kind of just left to his own Thing. and this is all about our main character going in and thinking that this guy needs treatment and he can provide it and he wants to learn the story so three stars because it was four stars pretty much the whole way in but the reveal of what the situation actually was is just not the way i wanted the story to go um i'm not going to try and explain it too much because spoilers but i spent quite a while trying to figure out what was going on and then the reveal happened and it was so outside of the scope of what i thought that it annoyed me a little bit but it was an interesting time and the audiobook was really good next we have the frighteners by peter laws which i actually did enjoy again three stars and i listened to the audiobook and this audiobook was available on my local library app, so it was really easy to get hold of. And this was a non-fiction book about why, as humans, we're obsessed with death and violence and monsters and all that good stuff. And I thought that was really interesting, especially in the time where I've started a true crime book club. I listen to true crime podcasts. I love true crime documentaries. I love... Um, I don't love watching horror films because I'm a scaredy cat, but when I'm with other people, I like watching horror films. So I just wanted to know why we do love it and this book got three stars because although i did enjoy lots of it it did not answer really in my opinion why we like it it was just a couple of stories from this guy's life and different things he's done which i did find interesting i just wanted a bit more of an explanation i guess 
Next I read The Night No One Had Sex and I can't remember the author's name. This was a NetGalley arc and to quote myself again, it was fine. So this is about a group of teenagers who it's their prom night and they make a pact that they are all going to lose their virginity by the end of prom night. And as the title says, it's called The Night No One Had Sex. So it's basically just a group of teenagers in silly situations. There's a cat that goes missing. There is um, some strange role play. Like it's hard to explain, but I gave it three stars because I did kind of enjoy it. I felt like it was lacking in places. Like I didn't really care for any of the characters, but I do think if I would have read this at 14, I would have thought it was the funniest thing in the world. It also gave, uh, in my opinion, which I think is a really good thing, it gave a perspective where it doesn't go right. And I feel like losing your virginity is a big romanticised thing in quite a lot of YA, especially in the YA I have read and was reading around the age of these characters. Wait, no, these characters are actually older because this is an American high school, so they may be 17, 18. Um, anyway, that's not the point. It does tell a story of two people who are in a consensual relationship. They are happy, they are like committed to each other and they both want to do it and biology just wasn't having it that day. And I did really appreciate that fresh outlook. I thought it was really, really good. Um, but yeah, three stars because it was fine, but it didn't blow me away. Next, we have The Girls by Emma Klein, which um, I'm holding the physical book because I own it at the time of filming. I am gonna unhaul this, but I listened to the audiobook and didn't really follow along because I pretty much listened to it in one day while I was working. I, again, three stars, it was fine. I don't wanna keep repeating it, but this just was not that much of a good time for me. I wish this would have been branded as a, I don't know because is it branded as Charles Manson inspired or is it just supposed to be a cult? I'm not sure. I just didn't really enjoy the telling of this story. I feel like it would have been much better to get a more non-fiction end side of the scale rather than this, which was written a little bit whimsically. Like I just, I don't know. I don't know what I didn't like. The writing style is what I didn't like, but I'm not very good at describing what I do and don't like in writing. It just, it just really disappointed me. And I know three stars isn't a bad rating. Obviously I did enjoy some parts of it. I'm glad the story was told, but it just grated on me a little bit and I wanted something grittier and stuck with me more, but I was happily just kind of ignoring it as I was working and things like that. So I just wanted something that hooked me a bit more. Next, we have The Illustrated Mum by Jacqueline Wilson. And even though this is three stars, I'm gonna hold on to this one because I absolutely love having this hardback copy. This is a book I read as a child and I'm rereading it as part of my massive, I bought loads of Jacqueline Wilson books. Let's see what my opinion is on them now. And yeah, three stars. I see why I liked this one as a child um, and I can understand with more of an adult perspective, more of, I am an adult, with an adult perspective, where I had to bring this one down just a little bit. So this is about Marigold, who is the mom of Dolphin and Star. Yes, Star. Um, Dolphin is the younger daughter and Star is a bit of a little bit of a moody teenager. So I think I must have seen myself in the moody teenager or something. But Marigold is not doing the best in this single mom sort of family. She is heavily dependent on getting tattoos to like express herself, which is not a bad thing. I do love tattoos. I am getting more. I have some. Um, but this book is portraying the idea that Marigold is not a normal mom. She is covered in tattoos and um, this sets her apart in some way from the other children's moms. This was written in the late 90s, so I can see why that would have been such a distinction. Obviously, the world has changed a lot. Society has changed a lot in terms of how tattoos are perceived. So I think that's why it grated on me at times. But I did enjoy the story of how um, Marigold comes to terms with mental health problems, etc. But in today's media, I think there are better things to read that are representative of all styles of parenting that do not link um, styles of physical expression with mental illness explicitly because they're two very different things. I don't know if that made much sense, but I don't want to spoil it too much. 
but it was heavily focused on saying that because she had a mental illness she had tattoos and she was a bad parent like they were they weren't mutually exclusive things if that makes sense next a controversial one <laughs> i rated the wicker king three stars i sadly did not like this book and i buddy read it with shannon from 155 books the premise of this story is a really really good idea in my opinion it is august and jack and jack is suffering with mental health problems and he is very quickly losing his sanity and as the as his sanity deteriorates the pages also darken and there is mixed media in here which is really cool the story was cool but what i didn't like about this book was the writing style so to try and find an example for you okay here we go so this is a, a double page spread this is like a chapter and this is a chapter it's told in chunks and like very bitty bits of text so most sections aren't more than a page and I found it very hard to connect with the story when we're being dipped in and out like that. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone have this opinion so I'd love to hear your opinion on this book if you've read it because I've only heard people who absolutely love it and sadly it just didn't do it for me. Okay moving on to the three and a half star books I'm gonna have to speed up a little bit but the first one I have is The Crown by Kira Cass which I buddy read with Helen from Helen's Bookhaven and finished this right at the start of the month so sadly I don't have too many opinions but this is the final book in the selection main series so you have the first trilogy and then the two books following a new character and I enjoyed the story here it was it was a four star read but I didn't like how, okay, I'm trying not to ruin it, but there was a decision our main character had to make and this decision came with many, many consequences, especially if she picked a certain route. She then picks a certain route and there are no consequences or the consequences aren't told. And I just wanted it to be fleshed out a little bit more. It is a pretty short book, so there was room. Next, I have Someone We Know by Shari Lapina, which I buddy read with Connor over at Connor's Library Corner. And sadly, I will also be unhauling this one. But this was just a regular thriller, a mundane thriller about a family whose teenage son has decided he likes to break into houses and he doesn't take anything. He just mooches about on their computer. And then one night he breaks into somebody's house whose wife has gone missing and then she is found dead. <sighs> Again, to quote myself, it was fine, but it just needed more and the big reveal of the murderer, the situation around the murder, just, eh, just, mm, it was, it was okay, but it just, it didn't blow my mind. Then a book I actually want to reread very, very soon is The Package by Sebastian Fitzek. So I read this on Chelsea's recommendation and Chelsea gifted it to me. So thank you very much, Chelsea. But, 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 <laughs> I don't know what I expected. I don't know what I got. I'm still sort of confused after this one. So we're following Emma, who has taken a parcel in for a neighbour. Well, that's how it starts on the back. But we actually start with her teaching a lecture hall and pretending to be part of an experiment. And then she's in a hotel room and she's nearly murdered. And as Chelsea said, when she gifted me this, there are so many twists and turns, it makes you feel a little bit crazy. And yes, it does. And I feel like it's a book that lends itself to reading it again. I feel like if I read it again, I could work out where I was confused and the whole thing would make more sense. But at the same time, it was a really good idea. So three and a half stars. Does that make any sense? Next, I listened to an audiobook, which was Accidentally Engaged. And unfortunately, the author's name has slipped my mind, but it will be on the screen. Uh, so yeah, this was an audiobook I listened to while I worked. It was very cute. It's just a contemporary romance about a woman who loves baking, hates her current job, and a guy moves in next to her in the apartment next to her. And he's actually somebody that her parents are trying to arrange a marriage with her to. And it was, it was cute. It was a four star read the whole way through because I found myself laughing out loud and I thought everything was adorable. But then unfortunately, it did hit a bit of a, again, without spoilers, there was a long distance relationship element to it, which I felt was handled really, really badly. And I can't fully explain why without spoiling the book, but it was just a negative take that it was like the be all and end all. And that's normally what I hate in YAs. Like imagine a YA and then they finish high school and they're like, well, it's going to be long distance. So obviously we're not going to continue this. And that's the kind of take it had without trying to spoil it. 
and I just didn't need that in my life this month so I knocked down half a star but it, it was pretty cute. Next I read Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell and I don't remember much of this at all so maybe I need to lower this rating because I have no idea. Oh no I've remembered it now okay this was really good but that will be why I gave it three and a half not four like one of the reasons this is very very forgettable um, to the fact that I've just had to skim like I looked at the back at the back to try and figure out what the story was but this is about Ellie who is her mum's like a star student happy-go-lucky girl and she goes missing when she's supposed to be at the library then Laurel the mum of the of, of Ellie um, makes a new friend and he has a daughter that is the spitting image of her daughter when she went missing so it's weird it's very weird but now I've got to the ending and like refresh myself, it all makes a bit too much sense. Like it wasn't very shocking, even though it should be shocking. So maybe my brain is messed up, not the book. <laughs> but it was a good time. I have a few more Lisa Jewell books that I want to read and this has encouraged me to pick them up. So yeah, it, it was it was good. And then the final three and a half star book I read is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. And oh my god, Chloe has actually rated poetry. So I have said in my past few wrap ups that I'm going to not read poetry anymore because I don't get it. Um, but I had this one on my iBooks account and I had some time to waste in the car. I didn't want to start a new book and I thought, you know what, I'll start this poetry collection and I can just chip away at it when I feel like it. And I read pretty much the whole thing in one sitting. So I don't really know how to describe this apart from the fact it's poetry and it talks a lot about eating disorders and relationships and abuse. And there were a few poems in here which really got me, like there was like a little tickle in my throat and I thought, oh no, I'm gonna cry. And then the rest of it, I just sort of skimmed through because I don't get poetry. So at this point in my life I am drawing the line under poetry but I do have the second one in this poetry series on my iBooks account so maybe when it's like a reading prompt but for now I need to accept I don't get poetry. Next my four star book for the month was Billy and Me by Giovanna Fletcher. So I really enjoyed this, it was so so cute. This was Rachel's book club pick for the month for Books and Me which is actually inspired by this book. This is about Sophie who works at the tea shop on the hill and then uh, it comes around that in her town there'll be a film crew filming, I thought it was Pride and Prejudice, is it Pride and Prejudice? I have forgotten. They're filming in um, Sophie's town and the main actor Billy stumbles upon the tea shop and there is a spark and it all ensues from there. One thing I will say about this book, it is a very very quick read. I was finding myself reading like 90 pages in a 45 minute sprint. I was absolutely flying through it. I'm so happy I picked it up. I'm so happy that Rachel raves about it. It's not the most amazing book I've ever read. I couldn't give it five stars, but it's definitely worthy of a four. It's a very, very good time. And I am gonna keep it around for the next time I need a little pick me up. So now we're on to my two favorite reads of the month. Um, one of which I did not even think, I didn't even know it was a book when I started reading this month and that is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. So I picked this up when I was in London with my booktube besties and I started it on the train because I felt a little bit travel sick um, and didn't want to read on my Kindle so I reached into my bag and picked up one of the books I picked up that day and I loved this. I read it all really with no intention of reading it this month and I don't know how much I'll be able to show you but it is all told as emails, pretty much. There's a few extra bits of mixed media, but mainly emails. And it's literally one murder, 15 suspects. Can you uncover the truth? So you are following along this murder mystery and trying to figure out what has happened in like it in what feels like real time because you're reading it as fast as Charlotte and Femi who are law students they're also reading all this documentation and trying to come up with an opinion so you're basically reading along with them I thought it was such a creative idea really really enjoyed my time it was missing something for five stars but it is a well deserved four and a half and finally, my favourite book of the month, and I kind of knew it would be this, was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. So I'm having a hard time saying I enjoyed reading this book. I didn't enjoy it. It was a very harrowing, very dark read. 
but I'm so glad I picked it up. So this is about, what was her name? But of course, Vanessa, my daughter Vanessa. This is about Vanessa who ends up in a sexual relationship with one of her teachers and she kind of goes away from high school thinking that this was okay. She's navigating her adult life and it's now come come to light that this teacher is under more allegations from students for repeating what he did to her basically and she's got to try and come to terms with what happened to her and how she feels about it. What I did really appreciate about this book is it did not go in the direction I was heading. Um, we are kind of going through Vanessa's feelings and I thought they would conclude at a certain place but they did not and I enjoyed having that insight into someone else's brain. Obviously this is fiction but getting an answer I didn't think I would get when we're following the same story was interesting. I like knowing different perspectives. Sadly the ending just fell a little bit short for me which is why it can't get five stars it has to get four and a half because I read this in one sitting I loved it so much but we got to the ending and it was like Ugh, I needed a bit more but if you feel able to read this book I would definitely recommend it it was a very dark time but I'm so glad I did it. So there we go, those are the 20 books I read this month. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you have any opinions, but this footage is already very long, so I'm gonna wrap it up here and say thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.